Hello friends, let us learn about a new topic today that is cholecystitis. So this cholecystitis can be of two types. One is acute and the second type can be chronic. Okay, so first let us learn about the acute cholecystitis. Right, so this acute cholecystitis can be calculus, a calculus, and then um, also emphysematous cholecystitis. Okay, this a calculus can be a calculus cholecystitis. Or cholecystopathy. A calculus cholecystopathy. So this is the classification of cholecystitis. So first let us learn about calculus cholecystitis. So what is happening in calculus cholecystitis? Here this is the gallbladder. Okay, so this gallbladder has the stone. Yeah, this gallbladder has the stone. This stone which is there, this will, number one, exert a mechanical pressure over the gallbladder mucosa. Over the gallbladder mucosa, it exerts a mechanical pressure. And once it exerts a mechanical pressure over the gallbladder mucosa it can decrease the blood supply of this gallbladder mucosa because of this pressure and thus it can lead to the ischemia of this portion of gallbladder ischemia can be there so this will lead to the ischemia and then necrosis of this part of the gallbladder so there is stone here so there is necrosis of this part of gallbladder okay because of the stone so that is mechanical effect and then this gallstone which is there so what does this gallstone do if you see this gallstone it will convert the lecithin which is there is converted to toxic lysolecithin so in, in the gallstone there is lecithin this lecithin is converted to lysolecithin so this conversion of lecithin to lysolecithin this is toxic to gallbladder okay so even this causes inflammation of gallbladder and then finally whenever there are some bacteria which causes accumulated in this so in such situation even then there is formation of cholecystitis it can be number one because of stasis there can be uh, increased infection that is bacterial infection resulting in cholecystitis or it can be chemical reaction of lecithin into lysolecithin which may become toxic or it can be due to a mechanical cause where it causes ischemia resulting in gallbladder toxicity gallbladder that is cholecystitis can be there okay so these are the different uh, ways how cholecystitis can develop in the stone so now the clinical features the clinical features here are the patient will present with the if this is the patient he will present with a biliary pain which is in the right upper abdomen and this pain will radiate to the inter back basically and also to the shoulders there is biliary pain which will radiate to the back and the shoulders and this is increased on nausea and it, in, it is associated with nausea and vomiting and this is increased on lying down 
this is the same type of pain which is seen in the gallstones okay the patient also presents with a fever fever and then the patient may have a gall bladder which is enlarged and tender enlarged gall bladder may be there okay here there can be enlarged gall bladder now um the patient um you can also find murphy sign positive what is murphy sign here you will palpate the right upper quadrant if you palpate it here then the patient will have pain so palpation of right upper quadrant causes pain that is murphy sign so this murphy sign is positive then the patient may have localized rebound tenderness so what is rebound tenderness here you are just palpating the right upper quadrant so once you palpate it like you will compress it the patient will have pain you will compress it for some time and then even after leaving the compression leaving the pressure even then the patient feels pain that is rebound tenderness even that is seen the patient also has tachycardia that is uh, increased pulse so how do you diagnose it the diagnosis if you see there is fever there is biliary pain that is right upper quadrant pain and then there is also leukocytosis and if you see uh, if you do liver function tests then all this uh, transaminases like ald and ast are increased the bilirubin this is also increased okay then you will do an ultrasound examination this ultrasound examination will show that the gall bladder which is there so this gall bladder has signs of inflammation and the wall is thickened so you see a thickened wall of gall bladder in the ultrasound okay and also you see that the bile duct which is there even that is dilated okay you also see dilated bile duct because of stasis of the uh, the bile okay so that is some things which are seen on ultrasound so this is how you will diagnose the calliculus cholecystitis then how are you going to treat it you give antibiotics are given if you suspect there is infection you will give you will give analgesics for curing the pain and then for calliculus stuff because there is stone in the gall bladder the best thing is doing a cholecystectomy but once always uh, wait and watch till the sub uh, symptoms sub uh, subside and then go for cholecystectomy this is calliculus cholecystitis now what the second uh, thing which i would like to deal here we have learned about calliculus cholecystitis now let us learn about a calliculus cholecystitis so a calliculus cholecystitis in a calliculus cholecystitis there is no stone at all but here all are due to secondary causes so what are they number 1 there can be some trauma to the area or there can be some burns over that area there can be burns uh, and then it can be after a surgery okay trauma then burns then after a surgery there are some precipitating factors which will activate this cholecystitis these includes diabetes mellitus carcinoma of gall bladder infections okay and and the, when the gall bladder has become tortuous so tortuous gall bladder torsion of gall bladder and also systemic diseases like cardiovascular diseases 
presence of TB, if the patient has uh, syphilis and also actinomycosis and sarcoidosis, all these can uh, activate or precipitate a calliculus cholecystitis. How are you going to diagnose it? It's simple by ultrasound. Okay, this has more complications when compared to calliculus cholecystitis. Then the next twin is a calliculus cholecystopathy. Here, cholecystopathy. If you see here, in a calliculus cholecystopathy, the motility of the gallbladder is disordered. There are no stones, there are nothing, but the thing is here the movement of it is decreased. Decreased motility. The gallbladder motility is decreased. So whenever there is decreased gallbladder motility, this will cause recurrent biliary pain in patients with gallstones or without gallstones. So here you will also see that there is pain is there in the right upper quadrant pain and then the patient has cholecystine levels which are there cholecystine is an enzyme right so this cholecystine levels cholecystokinin sorry this cholecystokinin levels are more less than 40% okay i'm sorry so cholecystokinin levels should be measured so there is so here you do a test which is called as cholecystokinin test so when you do a cholecystokinin cholecystography then this will show that the uh, gallbladder ejection fraction is more or less than 40 percent so this is one of the diagnostic criteria for the um, a calliculus cholecystopathy so if you do an ultrasound scan you see very large gallbladder why because there is no motility there is decreased motility of the gallbladder so all the bile which is there that is accumulating in the gallbladder so because of that there is large gallbladder okay so this is how you will see a calliculus cholecystopathy let us learn the last type of type of cholecystitis which is emphysematous cholecystitis so in this emphysematous cholecystitis it can be both a calliculus or calliculus but here in the gallbladder there are no stones but there are infection of organisms that is uh, clostridium organisms so these clostridium are gas producing organisms they produce gas okay in the gallbladder lumen so if you see in the gallbladder lumen you will find the presence of air or gas in the gallbladder lumen so this gas in the gallbladder is the major diagnostic future which you see in x-ray abdomen plain x-ray abdomen you can see this okay so this produces gas and it also causes gangrene of gallbladder because clostridium is really a, an aerobic infection which causes ischemia and gangrene of gallbladder it can also cause per perforation which may lead to perforation if it perforates then there is peritonitis so this is the about emphysematous gallbladder so how are you going to treat it treatment it is medical and surgical okay medical treatment you give number one analgesia for pain removal so the best analgesic which is indicated is meperdine or you can give any NSAIDs because these will produce less spasm to the sphincter of OD whereas some other may produce more spasm
and next you can give iv antibiotics can be given so you can give penicillins can be given or ciprofloxacin can be given like cephalosporins can be given mostly we give third generation cephalosporins okay and then in the medical treatment um if the patient has emphysematous cholecystitis in this you will have to treat it with metronidazole you will have to add metronidazole to the therapy medical therapy and then um yeah surgical therapy so this surgical therapy can be mainly of two types clearly we do surgery it depends upon the patient so one you can do emergency surgery and then you can do elective surgery or then you can do delayed surgery okay in elective surgery you will do less than 72 hours here in emergency you do immediately this may be because of emphysematous cholecystitis or whenever there is perforation you will have to do emergency cholecystitis in elective you do whenever there is normal uncomplicated and acute cholecystitis you do it and in delayed you do it whenever the overall medical condition which is there that may lead to risk for early surgery because if there is increased increased risk of emergency situations then you can do a delayed surgical intervention so this is the main thing about the acute cholecystitis okay what surgery do you do i forgot it's it's cholecyst it's surgery you will do but you will do the best surgery is cholecystectomy i'll teach you about cholecystectomy in my later classes so this is about chronic as acute cholecystitis so chronic cholecystitis even here the patient have the same symptoms uh, i'll deal it in our, in my next class so thank you guys for watching my lecture if you feel something is inadequate in this lecture please comment it in the comment section if you feel i can add something to this lecture even then comment it in the comment section thank you for watching my lecture all the classification which i have taken is from harrison so please refer to harrison for better understanding so thank you guys for watching my lecture if you have any doubts please comment it in the comment section please subscribe to the channel for more videos